Libby Moore is the former Chief of Staff to Oprah Winfrey of 10 years and one of our keynote speakers at EA Leadership Summit 2017. Libby will be sharing with administrative professionals about her amazing career, the signs and opportunities that took her there and how to achieve your most rewarding career. Now it is my great pleasure to speak to Libby Moore. Libby, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Jessica. I'm so excited to come. I can't wait to see you guys. I think it's about three months, right? Yeah, that's right. August 2017. Yes. Well, congratulations on your extraordinary career thus far. You've worked for Wenner Media, the publisher of Rolling Stone magazine, US Weekly, Men's Journal, and uh, Chief of Staff to Oprah Winfrey. Well, you talk about paying attention to the signs in your life in order to lead to extraordinary opportunities. What were the signs that led you to what many would consider to be the penultimate job, Chief of Staff to Oprah Winfrey? Uh, that is a great question, and I love answering this question. So to keep it short, for the sake of this interview, I moved to New York because I wanted to write for Saturday Night Live. I got a job as Maury Povich's assistant and then Jan Wenner at Rolling Stone. And uh, about three years into that job, I was thinking, I actually had an interview at Saturday Night Live, knew I would not get the, the job there. And then I started sending writing submissions to the Rosie O'Donnell Show, which was a big talk show at the time. And after 10 months of sending those writing submissions and getting zero reply, I thought, okay, this is not meant to be. So one day riding the subway, I said this prayer, okay, God, source, universe, whatever you want to call it. I think we all call it, they're calling it something different, but it's the same thing. I said, clearly you don't want me to have this job with Rosie. So whatever it is you want me to do, every atom, cell, and molecule in my body, mind, soul, and spirit is open to it. Show me what it is, make it really clear, and I'll do it. And I released that intention to the universe. And in about four or five weeks later, the Oprah job came, the Oprah opportunity came to me through a recruiter in Chicago. Incredible, incredible. Well, you worked as chief of staff to Oprah Winfrey for over 10 years. Can you tell us about one of the most uh, wonderful moments that you had during that time? There are so many wonderful moments that it's really hard. That's actually probably the hardest question that I always get because there are so many. I would say um, the building of her leadership academy in South Africa meant so much to me to be sitting in those board meetings when she was initially talking about what she wanted that school to be and then going through every process with her of watching the ideas unfold and then the ground being broken and Nelson Mandela being there to break ground on that day and then all the way up to the first class coming in and then all the way up to um, uh, I think it was January of 2012 when the very first class graduated from that school. To me, that's one of the highlights. And I would also say um, actually meeting Nelson Mandela was a highlight for me and getting to know Dr. Maya Angela, who I admired so much. And of course, the obvious, which is learning by Oprah's side and getting to know her. And she's one of the funniest human beings on earth and one of the smartest. And I just feel so fortunate that I got to have that experience with her. Incredible. And tell us about the greatest challenge during that time. I would say the greatest challenge during that time was without a doubt managing the the energy and the people and the requests that came to our office on a daily basis. So I managed a team of five assistants who were all extraordinary at what they did. I would not have lasted three months had I not had such a great team. And um, because I was her key liaison, I was the last stop before any phone call, meeting, uh, anything went on Oprah's schedule or went into her vortex. So. I felt a tremendous amount of pressure, the team and I did, to manage that, that flow of energy every day. That, that was the hardest by far. Mm. Well, during a Forbes interview uh, in 2016, you talk about the importance of being kind to everyone, regardless of their role or their status and regardless of how busy you are at the time. Um, can you tell us about the greatest value that you live by and how that affects the way you conduct yourself at work? Mm -hmm. 
I would say the greatest value to me is to be yourself with all people at all times in all situations. And that's a hard thing to do. I'm still working on that myself today, every day. Um, but what I found is that when you are yourself, um, that is when doors of possibilities open up for you because we're all unique individuals, but so many of us, society conditions us to be in these cookie cutters, my, you know what I mean? And just follow the sheep. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing. And that's why we're missing our passion and our purpose because we're following sheep as opposed to being our unique selves. And to me, that's about aligning with God, source, the universe, higher power, or whatever you want to call it. When you're in that flow, then you can be your unique self. And that's where extraordinary opportunities open up for you. Mm. You talk about tapping into your own personal superpowers. Uh, can you tell us more about how that allows us to be the best versions of ourselves? Yes, yes. I love superpowers. And we all have them. And we call them something different, you know? And some people get to those superpowers through working out every morning or swimming every morning or meditating or prayer or journaling. The important thing is to get to them and to tap in with them. And to me, again, that is aligning with your higher self, higher intelligence, God, source, universe, whatever you want to call it. We're all fighting over what to call it and we're missing the power in it. And when we align with that power, again, that's where the magic happens. That's where these incredible synchronicities come into your life and you look back and go, oh my God, that is amazing. That's how the Oprah job came to me. That's how so many doors have flung open. And so the more I realize that, the more I want to harness that power and share that message with people. It's extraordinary. It really is. Uh, if you could go back and provide one piece of career advice to yourself as a young administrative professional starting out, what would that piece of advice be? I would say um, you're, you're going to make mistakes. It's fine. Pick yourself up, learn from it, move on. Don't get stuck and spinning in your head on that mistake. You just, everyone makes, I wouldn't even call them mistakes. I actually think mistakes should be rebranded and just, you know, called um like checkpoints you know on a highway or it's like check past that one you learn from it you move on and ask questions people when you're hired at a new job in particular you're not you're not expected to know everything right off the bat it's a great time to ask questions and learn and grow and make these things that we call mistakes and you know move on really and be yourself that's what i wish i had done earlier in my 20s be yourself you'll move ahead a lot quicker yeah. There's nothing like genuine. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Authenticity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we are delighted to host you as our keynote speaker at EA Leadership Summit 2017. What can our audience of administrative professionals expect to gain from your session? Fun. It's going to be fun. I'm like I said, I'm easy breezy. I'm not. Um, I'm very, you know, I speak from my heart. And I think that, that what people will feel is, oh, wow, she's just like me. I didn't go to a special school. I didn't have any special connections at Oprah. I didn't even get straight A's in high school or college. I, I just am going with my flow, being myself, and I share my, my life story, follow, what I call following the breadcrumbs that led me to Oprah and then led me beyond that job into what I'm doing today. And so when people hear that story, they realize, oh, my God, she's not that different than I am. And we, we can all do that in whatever that is meant to be for you and your unique life. And it's fun and we'll laugh. I like to make people laugh. So expect some laughs. Well, we're so looking forward to it. Libby Moore, it is an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. I cannot wait to see you, Australia.